I'm all here, yes, and I'm Perfect. very excited. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Michael. Uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to be part of this very, very special, I, I would say, and it's even more relevant than, uh, than, uh, than in the past. So uh, hopefully we'll have a good, uh, good time. I think these are very interesting times and that's an understatement uh, globally uh, across the globe. And the topic that I'm gonna talk about is Speedwise Technologies. That's a very promising uh, cloud native uh, technology that's primarily resident in oil and gas in, in cyberspace. So. That's a mouthful. That's a very ambitious uh, topic. It has so many multiple uh, channels uh, to dwell on. And uh, one thing before I go into the, the conversation, uh, I, I want to introduce two of my colleagues, uh, Hamad Durabi, our CTO at QRI, uh, will be addressing some of the technical aspects. Hopefully we're not going to go too deep into them, but just to give the audience a sense of the revolutionary DNA of uh, Speedwise, I think it's relevant. Uh, and then regarding the investment financing portion, Ted Izad, our head of investment, uh, will come at the end in the uh, in the in the Q&A. So just to give you a sense of what I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to talk about the state of energy globally. And obviously, there are two main uh, influences, hyper influences, I would say, anytime you talk about energy uh, today. Uh, one is a COVID. And some people may argue that COVID is already in the past. But COVID itself uh, is just uh, one element that may repeat itself. You may see COVID 20, 21, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, COVID-19 changed the world uh, in all aspects, uh, and I think it's going to have a permanent impact on the thinking of people. So that's something that's definitely there. The other one is global warming. Whether, uh, whether we accept it or not, it has become a factor, and even more so vis-a-vis uh, -vis in energy matters. And when you talk about oil and gas, it's impossible to divorce the conversation about oil and gas uh, from what's going on in vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, uh, the global warming and how it's going to be impacted, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the other key word there is cyberspace, because one cannot talk about oil and gas as if it belongs to another planet. We're still on planet Earth. And when you look at many industries, you find something that's very common, that things are moving to the cloud very rapidly. And it, it has different words in different industries. Uh, and in, in oil and gas, the, the classic word that's used is digital transformation. So how do the confluence of these very complicated factors come in? And why do they make speed bites uh, more relevant uh, going forward. So that's basically my theme. And hopefully I'm going to get across the idea that we're looking at a very exciting future for uh, QRI, especially in, uh, in cyberspace. Now, philosophically, there are some existential questions uh, that underline all the discussion that I'm going to put forward. One that's a very obvious one: Will oil and gas be around for uh, for long? Uh, because there's a current thinking right now that this is the end of oil. And interestingly, only 13, 14 years ago, it was exactly the opposite. Uh, the the relevant group think in the world was about. Uh, peak oil, oh my God, oil was going to go to $200, $300, et cetera, et cetera. Now it's actually the reverse psychology that has taken over. So will 
the, the issue is oil and gas be around for long is a relevant one. The short answer is it will be around for a long time and not necessarily in energy because it has so much capacity and so many other roles. Now, the second one that we often hear nowadays is decarbonization and this idea of zero carbon. Uh, and it, I can tell you, it's a very well-intentioned phrase. And I can also tell you very honestly, it's scientifically wrong. Uh, there is no such thing as zero carbon because if we really go to a planet with zero carbon, there is no life. Human beings are made of carbon. Everything that we eat is carbon. Forests, trees, life is carbon. So the premise of talking about zero carbon uh, is wrong. Now, what is really being implied is zero emissions and more specifically zero net greenhouse uh, gas emissions that definitely contribute to global warming. And all of those things are valid. And in the new energy ecosystem, you have to have very valid answers as to how you can produce oil and gas uh, in an environmentally uh, climate-friendly fashion. And the answer is yes. That's why I believe oil and gas will be part of the energy equation. Now, why cyberize oil and gas? Well, the question is, why not cyberize oil and gas? Because everything else is being cyberized. Everything is moving to the cloud, whether you're going to buy a car or you're going to order groceries. And even Uber is the very essence of cyberization that's, that's going on. So what we're talking about oil and gas, and that's where Speedwise is coming, is being at the lead end of, uh, of, that, uh, of that movement. To AI or not AI, it's not a question. You have to AI because again, without AI, you're losing a lot. And again, that's one of the selling points regarding, uh, regarding Speedwise and uh, QRI's technologies. Now, the, the, the other one that I often get asked is, can AI accelerate failures? Well, you better believe it can. If it's misapplied, it sure can. But the corollary is, can AI accelerate successes? And it's an absolute imperative that you use AI to accelerate healthy, correct, valid capital decisions. So that's the essence of uh, of QRI and uh, Speedwise. And, and hopefully by the time we're done, uh, you'll get a better sense of why I'm so bullish of what I'm talking about. Now, let's look at the global energy ecosystem, especially uh, post COVID energy ecosystem. And there are so many projections regarding what the world needs, the world currently uh, needs about 600 quadrillion BTUs, that's 10 to the 15, if you're looking at uh, a, a metric of what a quadrillion BTU is. But in any projection, oil and gas, strictly as an energy source, is a still a, a preeminent player. Now, you can argue that the green line, which is going to the renewables, may get steeper and steeper, and I have no arguments about that. But to make an argument that somehow we're going to go from, say, 100 million barrels of oil and gas production to something like 20 over 10 years, no, there is no basis for it, even under the most aggressive uh, green energy uh, policies. You still, the globe still needs uh, quite a bit of energy because you have seven and a half billion people actually approaching eight billion people on the planet. That number is going to go to somewhere to between 10 and 15 billion. And uh, quality of life expectations require more energy. So globally, when you look at the equation, there's a very strong case that the global energy is going to demand. Definitely renewables are going to come clean and the energy sources 
that have a strong green accent can still play a very significant role. And that's where I think oil and gas can play a, a big role and will play a, a role. Now, the other side of the coin is, is energy the only arena where oil and gas can play? No, absolutely not. Uh, oil and gas, because of the presence of carbon in it and H in it, those two elements that are so critical to life on the, on the planet have many other applications, especially in an age of electrification. So a lot of the materials that you're looking at is still gonna come from, uh, from oil and gas. So I'm, I'm very bullish about the future of oil and gas going forward, not only as a supplier of energy, but also as a supplier uh, of many of the feedstock that would be necessary in the coming uh, decades. Now, a very quick snapshot of QRI 2.0. Why do I use the term QRI 2.0? Because QRI was established in 2007, essentially as a value creation advisory enterprise. It was the industry's first metrics-based advisory firm dedicated to creating value in terms of increasing production, uh, increasing reserves, increasing capital efficiency. And especially the capital efficiency is more and more relevant today across all industries. So uh, QRI 2.0, represents the transition of the company to becoming essentially a SaaS uh, venture. And that's where we're coming in with, uh, in, with our technologies. And, and Hamad is gonna be uh, elaborating on that aspect uh, in about uh, five to 10 minutes. Our corporate goal is to be a leader in oil and gas upstream digital transformation initiatives via cyberspace. Now, digital transportation is basically a word of bringing AI and machine learning and automation. All of those things are different, but they have very complementary meanings, especially if integrated uh, properly. And the key word again is cyberspace because you have to be thinking about AI you have to be thinking about the new ways of decision-making compared to the legacy systems, both in the major companies and in the small independents and small players, you have to be able to make the play and decisions much, much faster. Typically, I talk about a term Googleizing uh, oil and gas. And why do I use that term? Because we're talking about speeds and accuracies far, far superior to what's going on uh, today. Now, today, the ecosystem that we call the Speedwise Galaxy is about 16 technology products in different states of development. Collectively, they represent industry's most comprehensive AI-based technology suite of products. One distinction all of these products were developed with an intention to maximize value for clients. So all of these products, even though not all of them are commercialized, they're all battle tested. They all have in their DNA a very strong AI and machine learning uh, component. And I think that's gonna be more obvious when we go to Hamid's presentation with uh, examples. Since our exception, uh, inception in 2007, um, we, we have won many awards, especially the last few years, we keep winning awards in AI related, machine learning uh, related. And I don't wanna bore you with all that, but just recently, uh, a, a few months ago, we, got, we won an award in a smart water challenge held by Spain's Catalonia Water District by the way, it has nothing to do with oil and gas. And that's one of the most promising aspects of Speedwise that because of its AI and machine learning uh, capabilities, it, it's opening up uh, boundaries that we never thought of uh, before. And water 
uh, quality, environmental issues, manufacturing, et cetera, et cetera, fall in that uh, domain. Uh, we've been selected as one of the 10 best AI service providers by CIO Insights. And again, we were nominated in 2020. We were selected as one of the top digital transformation technology uh, companies uh, in, the, in the world. We have 20 patents and uh, 50 registered trademarks, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we have an extensive global reach. We're very well known across the industry, but more in the advisory realm. Of course, companies are very familiar with the capability and the power of our technologies, which all drives from Speedwise, and that's where the big opportunities are, uh, are coming. Uh, our executive team, and I don't want to go into all their uh, successes, etc. cetera, uh, uh, Hamad, you're going to meet uh, very quickly in about five minutes. Uh, and then Ted Izad is the handsome guy on the, on the bottom uh, leftmost. He is our head of uh, in, investment. But all of these uh, guys have uh, tremendous uh, management records. Now, at this point, I want to stop and uh, turn it over to Hamad who's going to give you a deeper look at our uh, AI technologies. And I will come back towards the end uh, to address the commercial uh, aspects and the why I'm so excited about the future of Speedwise. OK, no. Um... Thanks, Dr. Salary. Hello, everyone. Um, let me start. Uh, so the, this slide here uh, basically shows our uh, different uh, different te different technologies we have under Speedwise. Uh, so uh, four of these technologies uh, are already available as SaaS in a cloud native form: uh, Reservoir Opportunities, Water Flood Management, Machine Learning, and Decline Curve Analysis. And, and all the other products, as mentioned, are battle tested and we have been used that in our advisory work in, in different cap capacities. Uh, so although each one of these products can be sold standalone and, and solve specific problems for customers, uh, the real value is when you bundle all these products under Speedwise Galaxy, which, which helps operators to manage oil and gas reservoirs uh, much more efficiently. And, and today, if you look at the market, uh, there, there are multiple challenges for reservoir management and field development planning in, in oil and gas industries. Uh, data lives in silos. We often work with noisy and unstructured data that is not um, really ideal, and it's hard to be digested by AI-based workflows. And if you really want to sum it up, uh, the whole thing is very tedious and um, lead to long cycles, typically six months to a year, for, for updating field development plans, uh, which is not acceptable in a digital world where you want to make fast decisions by the data streams coming from uh, oil and gas assets. And then the Speedwise technology suite resolve these challenges and, and help oil and gas operators to make better and faster decisions. And we have many examples that, that supports uh, this statement. So here I'm listing uh, key differentiations of, of Speedwise uh, technology suite as a whole. Uh, compared to uh, other product um, uh, in, in the market. Uh, the first and most important differentiation is uh, Speedwise, uh, the speed in generating value. Uh, all products under Speedwise have been uh, developed over the last decade in, their, in conducting our advisory projects. And, and as a result, they're battle tested and highly pragmatic to attain maximum value. Uh, and, and creating, um, creating the maximum value in the shortest uh, time possible. So to typically you can solve problems uh, 10 times faster compared to existing workflows. And the time to value is really unmatched uh, in, in the market. Uh, in addition, Speedwise is really designed to convert uh, data to dollars and barrels. Uh, so the technology has been implemented over 150 oil and gas fields globally and enabled the generation of more than 60 billion US dollar value, which has already been realized by, by the operators that they've worked with. 
the second differentiation is the reservoir management centric. Uh, so we're building an AI powered cloud based integrated reservoir management platform, uh, optimally designed for digital transformation and, and the integrated top down holistic view of reservoir uh, leads to superior results. And um, we're basically connecting isolated domains, um, drilling engineers with reservoir engineers and geologists and giving them access to accessible cross-domain uh, workflows that can improve the productivity of, of, of their work. So in addition, the technology is driven by augmented AI, uh, meaning that all the products are fundamentally data-driven and leverage AI and machine learning. Uh, however, this doesn't mean that you're ignoring the physics-based approaches and expert-based uh, workflows. And this really, uh, um, especially in the engineering domain is very important because we cannot just ignore the physics on the, on, on the system. Uh, our technologies are targeting optimal complexity. We're not trying to overcomplexify, which is usually the trend in the industry. And uh, depending on the system, uh, complexity and data availability, the best model is, is chosen uh, all the time. Automation is in the DNA of our technologies. The, the automation typically leads to uh, 10 times save, save, 10 times uh, saving in time and also allow you to uh, explore hundreds of scenarios, which means better risk mitigation in, uh, in reservoir management. And, and finally, many of these technologies are, are based on advanced analytics and AI that have applications outside of oil and gas. And uh, one example is speedwise machine learning or SML, which I will briefly introduce uh, later. So I talked about augmented AI, which is our differentiated approach to, to AI. And a lot of time we get asked that, okay, there are many AI or machine learning providers in the market. Uh, what differentiates Speedwise against them? And, and the answer is very simple. Our approach to AI is, is very unique and uh, typically lead to much superior results. In, and of course we're using machine learning and data analytics. However, we combine that with intelligent physics-based and expert-based engineering workflows. And we automate the whole process to provide end-to-end -end solutions to customer. And, and the, the augmentation really comes from our experience on how to frame uh, complex oil and gas problems for, from uh, AI and machine learning perspective. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, Speedwise is cloud native technology, meaning that the products under Speedwise are accessible through internet and the data storage and all the computations are happening on the cloud. And uh, while this has multiple benefits for customers from cost saving to business agility, one of the important consideration for oil and gas operators is cloud security since we often deal with sensitive information in oil and gas. And we have built Speedwise in a way that meets the requirement of the most security sensitive organization. So here you see the, the high level architecture of Speedwise on AWS, uh, our cloud partner. And um, we have many security features to ensure that each tenant's data and workloads are secure from encryptions to identity management and authentication to IAM policies for controlling access to the resources on the cloud and et cetera. Uh, so here you see the technology stack on, on AWS. Uh, Speedwise is a modern app. The back end is Node.js and the front end is written, written using React framework. Many workflows uh, that users are running within uh, Speedwise are heavy both from uh, data storage and also computation perspective. And we're using a combination of data storage and compute services to optimize cost and ensure scalability uh, for, for our customers. And, and the whole automation that we put on the, on the CI CD pipeline uh, ensures that the users get access to the latest features in the fastest way possible. And, and the ability to deploy on, e, on different regions within AWS allows our users to have very low lat latency as they get access to the, to the product, either they are in South America, Europe, or, or Far East. So I just talked about Sweetwise on AWS, but we can also deploy the technology on uh, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, customers, private clouds, and also we have an option for, for on-premise deployment. Of course, the, the maximum benefit is when you use Speedwise on one of our fully managed clouds, which reduces the infrastructure costs, saves time on IT and server, server configurations, improves operational efficiency and business agility, and last but not least, 
uh, can reduce your, your carbon footprint. And as, as an example, running Speedwise on our fully managed AWS cloud typically lead to 88% reduction on carbon footprint compared to running those workloads on, on, on client servers. Okay, so let me switch gear now. So we don't have time to cover all the products under Speedwise, but over the next few minutes, I'm going to briefly introduce three of the products and uh, what they are and how they're generating value for our customers. And that should give you a good uh, general overview about the Speedwise technologies. So the first product is uh, I wanna cover is, is uh, Reservoir Opportunities or, or SRO. And if you look at the oil and gas operations, um, more than 70% of the capital in oil and gas uh, uh, upstream market is spent on drilling and completion. And, and the biggest questions um, that usually engineering teams are faced to answer is where to drill the next well or which wells I need to uh, do a workover on. And, and SRO is a cloud native AI based product that automates steps typically performed during the selection of new, new wells. And I will give you a list of ranked candidates for uh, drilling new wells or list of uh, opportunities for workovers. And today the product is available as a subscription through Emerson, uh, our um, sales channel part partner. And we see a great traction already in the market. And if you see in, in the market, there is no comparable product to, to SRO. The, the alternative is really to use several software applications uh, plus ad hoc and manual work, which is very slow and typically takes uh, six months to a year to get the uh, list of rank up rank uh, candidates for new drills. And, and on, the, on the other hand, SRO accelerates this, uh, the time to value. You can build your catalog of new wells or workover candidates uh, 10 times faster. And it also improves uh, team productivity and asset team now can work in a collaborative environment and spend most of their time in uh, vetting the results and exploring alternative scenarios um, inst instead of going through the um, uh, instead of uh, going through the uh, tedious uh, process of identifying opportunities. Um, so the, the the example that I'm highlighting uh, at the bottom of the slide is a giant um, onshore oil field in Middle East with more than 1,000 active uh, producers and produced uh, around two million barrels of oil per day at its peak. And, and the, the asset team here, we're looking to identify uh, workover and new deal locations in, in this field, but their, their process was very slow and they were not able to capture the uncertainty that they had in the various parameters in the system. And only within five weeks, uh, leveraging SRO, they were able to identify more than 250 low capital workover opportunities. And, and the production gain estimate from, from these opportunities were between 100 to 1,000 barrel per day for each one of those. And some of the top candidates um, uh, of, of the workovers already implemented in this field with, with, with great success. And similar to the example I just showed, uh, SRO has been applied to a diverse portfolio of more than 100 oil and gas assets. Um, uh, globally, almost in every case, it led to significant business outcomes uh, while improving uh, efficiency by uh, an order of magnitude. The two case studies are, are highlighted in this table uh, as a reference. So we already covered the, the Middle East example in the last slide. You can see the order of magnitude efficiency gain in terms of time, person, month, spend, and also the, the number of scenarios explored uh, compared to existing workflows. And the other case study is a mature oil field in uh, Latin America uh, with more than 200 wells, 18 reservoir zones, uh, seven years of production history under water flood, very complex uh, system. And the asset team were facing the similar situation. So they were um, not able to um, uh, um, integrate the latest information on the field and, and identify the new drill location in a, in a timely manner. So they, they used, um, SRO and they were able to explore 15 different scenarios and identify dozens of new drill locations uh, only within six weeks. And in fact, the top wells, um, the top 10 wells identified by SRO were drilled by the operator and the average production came 40% higher compared to the last drilling campaign. And again, you see the numbers in the table uh, and orders of magnitude efficiency gained through SRO in terms of time, person, months, uh, spend and also number of scenarios looked at. And um, 
I uh, also, you can also see the, the reference here. You can look at more examples in our World All article cited here. Uh, it's also worth to mention that SRO was, uh, was a finalist for the 2020 World Oil Best Digital Transformation Award uh, last year. Okay, so the next technology I want to cover is, is speed wise diagnostic, which is probably the most fundamental technology that we have. And uh, the, the analogy here is, is basically the diagnostic reports you get uh, from doctors based on your recent uh, blood tests, past diseases, family history, et cetera. So SDX is basically uh, organizes and clean all the, all the multidisciplinary data set uh, in, in oil and gas. It uh, uh, offers automated multidisciplinary analytics. And, and then there is, a, there is an AI system that emulates the decision-making ability of a human expert and identify all the bottlenecks and, and the key recovery obstacles um, in, in the reservoir. So the example highlighted here is a, for a giant oil and gas field uh, where the diagnostic reports identified several wells with uh, misproduction allocation and prob problematic behavior. And as a result, the plan was adjusted and resulted in 8% reduction in water cut equivalent to 65 million uh, US dollar annual saving in, in, in OPEX. So the last product I want to highlight is SML. Uh, and today, if you look at oil and gas industry or any other industry, everyone wants to leverage uh, machine learning and move toward digital transformation. But a key challenge is a lack of expertise in the workforce. Uh, so machine learning is very powerful, but also very complex. You need to learn programming, statistics, data processing, and many other skills. And, and to apply machine learning companies uh, today usually hire data scientists who are very expensive and also might not also understand their, their business problems that they're, they're facing. So SML is a generic auto ML solution on a SaaS platform that allows everyone, even non-data scientists in your organization to be able to build high quality machine learning models. So you can build and deploy models 10 times faster with few easier steps without knowledge, uh, any knowledge of programming. And, and um, several of our clients actually told us that SML is the most user-friendly uh, product for, for machine learning in the market. Uh, in addition, we put a lot of emphasis on the interpretability of the machine learning models, which is absolutely a must for many, just many industries. So we have to trust AI models uh, to make decisions and nobody wants to use the black box models to make decisions anymore. Uh, again, SML fits very nicely with uh, other products in the Speedwise uh, and can solve several problems in, in upstream oil and gas uh, sector. The example here I'm showing is an unconventional oil and gas asset where we optimize completion design and um, well spacing through, through SML and increase five-year EUR for that asset by 33%. But also SML has applications beyond oil and gas and, and you can add basically value in any industry. Uh, you need to build predictive models. So highlighting a success story here outside of oil and gas, which is Amplus 21, one of the users of SML. And uh, they're the scientific consulting companies active in, in Europe in uh, many top environmental projects. And they use SML uh, to build a predictive model to, um, uh, to predict quality of the water when you uh, next to a mining and nuclear waste. And they won the first award uh, recently in the Catalonia event as, as Dr. Salary mentioned. So similar to the success story I just showed uh, outside of the oil and gas, the opportunity with SML is endless. Uh, we already have users in various sectors, gaming, construction, environmental, et cetera, from a targeted release of the product in Spain. Uh, since the beginning of this year, we've been working with, with uh, AWS, our partner, on a go-to-market plan on several verticals. We just had two targeted events with, uh, with AWS in manufacturing and oil and gas, and we have two upcoming webinars in the next 30 days in power and utility and, and health cares, and, and we're going we're gonna to keep doing it. So uh, this is my last slide, highlighting our commercialization roadmap. As I mentioned uh, in the beginning, today we have four products available as SaaS and all the other products are scheduled to be launched uh, in, in the next two years. So this concludes my part. I'll hand it back to Dr. Sarai, okay? Yeah, thank you, Ahmed. And I just quickly will cover uh, how we're approaching the commercialization because it's one thing to have a super technology but it's a totally different thing in, in selling the technology, uh, especially in a 
in a cloud environment. And I think that's where the global collaborations and access to the platforms come in. And I'm very happy to uh, share with you the fact that we have a global collaboration agreement with Emerson uh, for one of our products, which is the most capital influential product, SRO. And right now, uh, probably uh, before the end of uh, June, within 30 days, we're going to have three more products that are uh, that are commercially ready to go on the Emerson platform. Similarly, uh, we're in uh, discussions right now uh, with Schlumberger to bring our Speedwise family on a non-exclusive basis uh, into their platform, which is going to open up uh, quite a bit of a, a market to us. And then third, uh, and definitely not the least is the Amazon uh, connection. Uh, with Amazon, now we're able to put machine learning uh, to a wide variety of, uh, of uh, industries, uh, including oil and gas. SRO is also uh, going to be available on, on Amazon. So we believe the, the, the access to these platforms would give us a terrific uh, boost in, uh, in increasing our sales. Now, uh, looking uh, forward, what do I see? Beginning with uh, 2021, of course, the advisory part of the business is not disappearing. It's, it's the fundamental piece that actually feeds the, uh, the SaaS business, which is the focus of the of the company, and actually the funding we're looking for is strictly for the SaaS component. For 2021, conservatively, we're looking at $1 million. It could actually be north of that. I expect it to be closer to one and a half. But based on the pipeline of interest that we're seeing uh, so far, I think a million dollar revenue is uh, is uh, is a, a pretty conservative number, and then we're anticipating a very sharp increase uh, in our SaaS revenues, uh, reaching twenty five million dollars by twenty twenty four. I wouldn't be surprised. Actually, we're north of uh, uh, the twenty five million uh, figure that I'm I'm quoting by uh, by the end of. Um, 2024. Now, what are we looking for uh, from a funding perspective? And maybe in, in Q&A, we can elaborate more on this. Very briefly, we're looking for a funding of one to five million, uh, million uh, dollars uh, in a multi-stage uh, uh, process, in a stage gate uh, fashion that's tied uh, to very specific uh, KPIs, uh, and it's going to be dedicated 100% to multi-channel sales and marketing and commercialization of uh, Speedwise uh, products. Not all of the products. We already have four of the products commercialized, and we have identified the top three where there's quite a bit of customer demand uh, that's uh, that's coming. And in essence. Uh, it's uh, it's a, on a loan basis with the terms, uh, very attractive terms, that's convertible to a preferred stock uh, 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 at, at, at the preference of the, uh, of the investor. So we can discuss more in case of uh, interest. Now, I wanna, I, I wanna uh, summarize the message that uh, I gave you uh, in, my, in my talk. The, the main ideas that I want to leave you with is that oil and gas is not disappearing. In fact, it's going to get stronger and stronger, in my opinion, is a critical uh, player, not only in energy, but also in fundamental, uh, critical a feedstock uh, to the future civilization uh, of the uh, of the world. So I'm I'm a big believer 
that oil and gas is going to continue to be a very important player, but it has to have the green aspects of it. It has to have an extreme capital efficiency component that must come in with AI and machine learning and automation. Continuing the legacy practices is not a formula for success. So these are the companies that are gonna be the, the new uh, players going forward in energy and specifically in, in oil and gas. Now, the, the other thing is, again, I think it's an obvious one that AI and machine learning in cyberspace will be an imperative. It's not an option anymore. So it's just a matter of how fast this transition is gonna take place but it is taking place. It's almost very similar to the greening of, of energy, that there's no question that energy is to be uh, green, has to be a climate uh, friendly and climate pleasing and climate compliant. And, and I think uh, we can do it, especially with our technologies, we can definitely move the companies in that uh, direction. Now, where does QRI fit and Speedwise fits? It's exactly at the intersection of all these plays. That's why I'm, I'm very, very bullish about the, about the future. And finally, the main purpose uh, of this engagement is to so solicit support and funding uh, for QRI, somewhere between one to $5 million dollars uh, in a stage gate uh, process. In my opinion, given the numbers that we're looking at, it really uh, offers a fantastic investment opportunity. So that basically concludes my presentation. Again, I want to thank uh, Michael uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity, giving me and, and Hamad in sharing our, our thoughts. So before I go, I, I'll show one more thing that that really uh, represents the, the future on April 19, 2021, NASA's Ingenuity was the first helicopter in Mars. Uh, who would have thought of something like that 10 years ago? And I think that's where the world is going, that a lot of unexpected events, some bad, some good are happening. Clearly we're going through a transformation and QRI is right in the middle of that uh, transformation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nansen. Um, Nansen, uh, is Ted going to be uh, joining the call to discuss some of the um, stuff with regards to the opportunity to fund and support QRI uh, in the raw the technology? I think uh, the the answer is yes, but in case you can, I'll I'll do my best imitation of Ted. Ted, uh, I don't know if you're able to to come. Yeah, I'm, in. I'm here. I'm okay. here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we Ted. You. We we can hear you. You just need to start your video. There you okay, go. Okay. There I am. Hi, everybody. Yeah, I think what we, the plan was. We've kind of laid out the the scope of what QRI is doing, you know, it's extremely innovative. We're revolutionizing the way oil and gas is going. The only comment I would add to everything that's been said would be that the industry is going through a massive change and it needs to become much more efficient. You know, there's definitely gonna be demand for oil as Nancy said, and the industry itself is having to adjust to the, the way the world is, especially to become much more efficient. And what, what the products that QRI has will create that and will help oil become even more competitive and environmentally sound by making more efficient operations. On the financial side, uh, Nansen did lay out our goal. Um, QRI is, you know, we've all, all of us on this call have been through obviously the pandemic and the slowdown and everything that happened in the economy. We're coming out of that now. We're at a point where our products are commercial and becoming more commercial and they're going really well. So we want to uh, be able to continue to do that. It's a very competitive environment and we want to rapidly develop these products, um, four of which are commercial, 
three, three highly commercial and, and in a lot of demand and continue to develop the full suite of the Speedwise Galaxy product. So this financing is kind of a, a bridge into that as we move into a much more profitable situation and go forward. So, you know, I guess there'd just be, if people have any questions, you know, about the financing or about the technology, feel free to ask. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, knowing, knowing the, uh, the, the, the actual trajectory of this company very well and all of the, um, amazing people that have been behind this company since inception and the whole story. Um, what, what do you think um, today is the, um, the, the best way to put your own personal money into uh, QRI? What does, what does that look like, uh, you know, f for you? Well, I'll answer that, Nansen. You probably may have some thoughts. The best way to do it is the, exactly the way we've outlined it. Because if you look at the structure of this deal, you come in, you know, it's a preferred stock, you get a coupon, you have collateral, the security, you know, there'll be security in the IP and everything. So an investor will be in the very first position. I, I'll mention to everybody that the company has no external debt. The only debt we have is to um, some of the shareholders, you know, executives and Nansen specifically. There's nothing external, so you, you don't need to worry about that. Um, people would be in a first secured position uh, in the company. They'd, they'd have a really strong influence on decisions by having a board seat and all those types. Uh, you have the option later of converting that into equity, pure equity in the company at, at a discount or um, can be paid out. So. This structure is actually the best structure for somebody to invest in QRI at this point. Okay, and um, <clears throat> and there's a lot of upside. Let me just say, there's a huge, very significant, significant upside because as these products get um, accepted, well, we all know what happens with technology as it's, as it is accepted, and basically the impact that these products will have on oil companies is it will lower the cost structure. So normally they're paying engineers, you know, a couple of hundred thousand or more a year. These are very, very, very expensive people. And they have to have a lot of engineers and a lot of support in order to manage these oil fields. They're, they'll be able to reduce those costs dramatically and they'll be able to act, uh, get things done a lot more quickly and efficiently with these technologies. So, so there's tremendous upside as this gets adopted in the oil industry globally and as Nansen and Hamed mentioned it even goes beyond just oil and gas. So there's another upside for people. Got you, got you. So um, Nansen, knowing, knowing you for a, a long time now, and um, I just wanted to like come back to one of the points in your presentation with regards to, um, to, to oil in your career and um, some of the things that I know, but you know, I don't think the people listening today know anything about. Um, so when there was tight, uh, you know, oil uh, in Saudi Arabia, uh, was it um, a contrarian or a divergent view that you could get productivity boosted back up and online at that time? Um, was that something that was, uh, you know, people didn't think was possible and what part did you play in helping, uh, Saudi Aramco to, to produce more oil on a daily basis? Well, it's an interesting question because, uh, yes, uh, I was in the middle of all that. Uh, in fact, I was head of, as you know, for almost a decade for their entire oil and gas uh, uh, production and played a major role in the technological transformation of the, of the company. And during that time, which I made a reference at the beginning of my talk, it was the time of peak oil. Peak oil was the, uh, was the primary accepted 
uh, dogma across the industry among all the experts and uh, and the majority of experts believed it was we were coming to the end of oil because we were running out of supplies now at the center of it again was Saudi Aramco's ability to produce oil sustain its production and increase its production and uh, I became a, a major spokesperson in highlighting that. And when you go back and when you look at the record of what was claimed by the peak oil advocates versus what I said, uh, you know, it's very interesting because today we're looking at exactly the opposite of that, that people think now, again, very prematurely that this is the end of oil, that somehow oil is oil and gas would be irrelevant and uh, that's not true. It just oil and gas have to become much more green, much more climately friendly, and much more capital efficient. And at the root of it is technologies and basically the success of the company at the time, and it still is, is their efficiency of production. And how was that efficiency achieved? It was through uh, new technology. So. That's what we represent in Speedwise and QRI. We're bringing the future to the, to the present. When we talk about 10X, actually we're being modest. We're talking about 10X to 100X speed ups and accuracy in making capital decisions, both for conventionals and unconventionals. And, and those companies that that are able to incorporate those types of efficiencies, I, I think will be the successful uh, companies. And that's where the, the opportunity lies uh, for uh, QRI and other technology companies. Obviously, we're not, the, we're not the only one. There are a lot of other smart people and smart, uh, smart companies. Right. So... Nansen, how big of an opportunity is this? Like how many potential clients do you think are out there to sell the software license to the SaaS Speedwise model? Well, I think thousands, thousands. I mean, for one thing in, in oil and gas, the, you know, talking about a thousand licenses is, is very achievable, okay, uh, globally. In fact, you can even uh, talk about tens of thousands, but once you cross the boundary of oil and gas and you go into the machine learning territory, which extends to manufacturing, environmental, mining, uh, waste treatment, pharmaceuticals, any problem you can think of that's multidimensional and is data rich is very prone to machine learning. And that's what we experience with the Amphos 21 uh, success in that because of our machine learning and the user friendliness, all of a sudden we became a successful in a totally new uh, area. So when you look at the combination with Amazon and the open access to so many different, uh, so many different uh, industry arms, you're talking about thousands and thousands. That's why I say the revenue prediction for 2024 uh, of $25 million for SaaS only is very conservative. Uh, when we look at the five-year projections, the many of the scenarios were, were pointing to uh, close to $100 million uh, annual revenues from, uh, from SaaS. I chose not to put numbers like that, and we'd rather be very conservative with what we see uh, in the market, taking into account a lot of the risk factors and competition, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I believe that there is a big future uh, for Speedwise, both in oil and gas and beyond uh, oil and gas. So, Nansen, big, big opportunities. Um, you have all the technology in place. You have good tech partners. 
you have a great uh, sales channel uh, through your partnership with Emerson. Um, what about the like slow to adopt oil and gas industry? What, what are some of the ways that you guys are going about, you know, changing their stubborn, you know, slow to change behavior? Well, uh, you know, part of the funding is going to go to uh, essentially that, to sales and marketing and, uh, and sales support, because I believe we're going to take off. But then you really have to have the support group uh, to support the enthusiasm and the growing markets. And you can't do it. Uh, without capital infusion. So the essence of the one to five million, a lot of the money, uh, at least 50% of the money is gonna be dedicated to a much stronger sales, marketing and technology support. The other 50% will be dedicated to commercializing the other three uh, products. So. We're envisioning a future where we, we would have seven products uh, that would complement one another, that would contribute uh, to the technological uh, transformation of the, of the companies. Now, one other comment, uh, you, made a, you made a reference. What about the slow and resistant? Well, my observation is, slow and resistance will not be around, okay? I mean, I, I, uh, you know, where is Pan American? Where is TWA? Where is Swiss Air today? That, does that mean that airline transportation disappeared? No, airline transportation, even now with COVID is coming back and it's gonna get a grower, but the players, the airlines are different. And that's the very thing. You're gonna continue on producing 100 million barrels and probably 10 to 13 million barrels domestically uh, from uh, the US, but who will be the active players? The active players are the ones who are automated, who are AI driven, who are extremely capital efficient. A moderate capital efficiency is not going to cut it. It doesn't cut it in the auto industry. It doesn't cut it in the uh, pharmaceuticals. It doesn't cut it in the uh, in aviation. So I'm not saying anything dramatically different. All I'm saying is market forces will dictate who the future successful entities that are going to be part of the energy equation and part of the feedstock uh, equation. Nansen, Nansen and Michael, let me jump in with one comment as well on Michael's question. Michael, you started the question out by saying the stodgy, you know, backwards, basically oil industry, which is what we all know and we've all lived with. But I think things are actually starting to change within the oil industry, if you watch what's happening. I'm not saying these guys are making the quickest decisions yet, but if you look at other technology, if you look at the tech service providers, they're all focused big time on technology. They talk about it all the time. And if you look at the big oil companies, they as well are talking more about the need to do it and the other oil companies. So I think the industry as a whole is realizing that they've got to change, you know, and it's the same disintermediation that occurred in every other industry, like Nansen was alluding to, airlines, pharmaceuticals, banking, investment, everything. If you go back through history, it happened to every industry. Oil and gas just happens to be one of the last ones that's gonna to happen to, but it will happen in order for these companies to remain profitable and to survive in this environment and to present a better image to Wall Street. That's the other part of it. Having Amazon work with QRI is actually really significant. I think a year or two ago, if you'd gone to Amazon and said, well, let's do something with the oil and gas industry, it would have been, oh no, that." fossil fuels, we don't want anything to do with that. Well, we're finding that these big technology companies now are talking about getting involved with the technologies that are going to help fossil fuel fuels because they realize this industry is not going away. It's still really needed. 
Well, gentlemen, we are out of town. We're out of town. We're out of time for today. Um, Nansen, thank you so much for coming back on and spending time with us today and updating us to your developments at QRI. Um, thank you, Ahmed, for going into the technology. It's really exciting and uh, nice to see what you have been focused on and building. Um, Ted, thank you for taking the time and sharing with us the opportunity. Um, for anybody that's interested in investing, um, please reach out to me or anyone on my team. Um, I'm happy to put you in contact with the QRI team directly, and we'll be circulating some contact information after the event today for you to get in touch with the QRI directly as well. Um, for those of you that are thinking about it, don't think about it. Take out your checkbooks and write some checks. Um, you're getting significant value uh, with with this team and, and the company. The company is really a world-class company. As you can see, they've spent a lot of time and money and energy in building it and developing it and doing it really the, the right way and not cutting any corners. So, um, you know, again, I'm grateful to have you guys on again. And, um, you know, I look forward to having you back uh, to discuss the next phase of your development.